Okay, so today I wanted to go over uh, my original finished keyboard. Um, I wanted to do kind of a rant today and to show you um, my first keyboard because I think a lot of people online have this perception that uh, they can't do a project because they don't know something or they're taking the wrong major or they're, they're out of school so they can't relearn it. And I think a lot of people really just need to learn um, they can take initiative and you can really learn a lot of stuff on your own by the internet now. Um, so I wanted to go through this keyboard just to show, um, you might think from the outside it's a pretty, um, I can't say clean build because I didn't intentionally make it clean. Uh, I made it kind of into the cyberpunk aesthetic, um, but I wanted to show the insides of it to show that you're not going to have a perfect first project and um, people really need to tamper their expectations of uh or i guess their their abilities they they need to think that they can do stuff rather than just having this uh wallowing thing of i can't do it i won't do it um all that stuff so i'll go over the basics of it uh it's a 65 percent modified i added this extra row uh, that allows me to get full arrow keys and my insert home delete and end which are useful for me in typing documents um, it's using kale box blues, so I'll show you with a keycap color here. Um, it's black on gray keycaps, which was kind of a mistake in poorly lit dorms. But you can see kale box blue. Um, I don't know if you can see it here. It's basically just a kale box white with the click bar, but it's a, got a slightly heavier spring. Um, they're a little low profile. I think they're cherry profile keyboard keycaps or whatever. Got two buttons here. I'll show those off later. And I've got a vertical USB 3 port, which is currently non-functioning, but it did work at one point. Um, I'll show that off later too on why it's not functioning. But um, you can see here, I kind of leaned into the cyberpunk aesthetics. So I have hammer marks all over the top of it. I have a parallel part, which is, or a parallel port, which is kind of an old port. Uh, I have USB-C. These used to be USB 3 pass-throughs. I'll show why I don't have them. Audio pass through to the side and then uh, basically just a hammered JB welded together uh, so you can see JB weld in the all the seams and then the diffuser itself uh, the LED diffuser was hot glued and then clear coated so this is all aluminum and clear coated uh, so it shouldn't rust well aluminum doesn't really rust in general but I'll show it plugged in uh, USB-C port doesn't line up right now um, because of other reasons, but you can see the LED row, low row works. It goes through all the colors. You can have intensity, so you can change it to white. Um, you can see it's kind of an uneven distribution because it's hot glue, which I kind of liked. Um, you can change the brightness. So you can you can do whatever you want. It works as a keyboard. Um, I can type stuff. It'll appear on my other monitor. I can't show that right now though, but. I'll show it, I'll take it apart, and I'll kind of walk through why I think people just need to start building rather than thinking they can't build. Um, so I don't know if I mentioned it yet, but I built this at the age of 17. I was in high school, obviously not enough to go into post-secondary yet, so I knew I wanted to go into electronics engineering, which I'm in right now, but uh, I didn't have actual electronics uh, knowledge. High school courses are fairly basic with it, so you really only learn Ohm's Law and nothing else. So most of this keyboard was self-taught. Um, this was back before COVID, well, before COVID started. I finished it right before COVID. Um, but I think a lot of people think that they can't do it, and uh, I think you can. If I was 17 and I built this, and it works now, uh, you're, you at whatever age you can, you can build it too. Um, so if you take off the back here, you can see it's a complete mess. Uh, nothing, nothing is really organized. Uh, it's just horribly assembled. But this is the kind of thing that uh, people need to realize: is that uh, the PCB itself, like a lot of this was jank from added features, but um, the PCB itself adds rigidity. It works. I made a lot of mistakes with it, but there is nothing I couldn't fix. Um, you can still fix a lot of uh, keyboards and just get them working uh, by doing hodgepodges but you're by yourself. So this was a two-layer board. Uh, I'll show you some of the mistakes I made. 
Uh, it runs off a of Pro Micro, obviously USB C, and I've got special features with the parallel port, audio pass through. So we'll go through the parallel port right now. What that was was a USB 3. Uh, it was for audio and the power buttons, so it was kind of a uh, jack of all trades port. So the idea was if I plugged in a custom made parallel port, it'd plug into my PC and I'd be able to control stuff like the power and all that without the uh, without the actual PC, without pressing the actual PC button itself, it'd just be on my desk. Um, obviously that means I have USB wires, all these wires running over, which is why they're not terribly nice. Um, it's gotten worse over time as I've fixed it for stuff. Um, but again, it runs off of Pro Micro, and that Pro Micro is just sitting here loosely um, because I didn't socket the actual Pro Micro itself. So originally, um, I'll pick it up here and show. Um, it was sitting in this little two two hot glued roads, and that was where the Pro Micro sat originally. But what happened was I burnt out one of them and I had to desolder it. And I realized that it was kind of a mistake doing that, so I ended up doing jumpers. So if I ever needed to resolder it in, it'd be a lot easier to resolder with jumpers than it was for that. Um, that's something that I didn't know about uh, dip sockets or sockets for the Pro Micro in general at the time. Uh, so I didn't end up adding them. I should have, but I just didn't. Um, another thing was LEDs. So um, you can see it's hand wired in there, which was painstakingly horrible. I don't recommend doing it, and I didn't even get the, um, once I put it together, the backlit, backlight immediately broke, so I stopped using it. But um, I didn't realize there was different packages of LEDs. These are the SK6812, and what I was looking for there was the SK6812 Mini E's. Um, obviously that's something you learn, but it's a big experience that I learned personally. And you kind of just have to learn that by yourself. Um, a lot of this I didn't ask questions because um, I found the communities I was in weren't great at the time. Uh, but I found other communities now that are way better, like the Cyber Cyberdeck Cafe, um, which has a lot more members now, and stuff like ZMK, which is the wireless mechanical keyboard. Uh, that actually works pretty well. And I've been able to learn a lot more. But a lot of this you're just going to learn by yourself. Um, there's a lot that I learned that I made mistakes on and I wish I did better and I XYZ but again I was in high school I made it uh, another thing I realized so the stabilizer you can see that had to be cut out individually because I messed up the spacing uh, some of the switches I messed up like I think enter I had to uh, change out because I messed up the spacing uh, because I didn't realize it was on a 19.5.05 millimeter grid I think I measured it by hand and I got it actually pretty close for most of them. It's just some of the other ones that I messed up. Uh, it was designed in Eagle, Eagle CAD from Autodesk. Uh, I recommend now if you're looking at PCB software, use KeyCAD. Uh, it has a lot more community support um, and it's getting a lot more updates than Eagle is. Um, it's also got just a lot more PCB keyboard libraries, which I should have used more of because um, these this keyboard library I used wasn't that great. Um, but again, a lot of this is hodgepodge because uh, I just made mistakes during the process or assembly. I accidentally cut a trace or something like this one's a jumper to one of the columns because I messed it up. Um, but again, that's something you just have to learn yourself and you're not going to learn that by wallowing in sorrow and saying, I can't do this. I can't do that. Um, you just got to get out and do it. And obviously this took me a while. This took me multi probably over six months, probably closer to a year to me to design and assemble. And then meanwhile, now I cranked this one out in a couple months and that probably about two months. And it's all SMD and this has battery management and stuff uh, cause it's a wireless board. But uh, this was only after about three years and I learned it myself. So uh, again, with the features, had USB pass through. This port doesn't work right now because it's disconnected. Uh, because originally I had a USB hub. I've taken that USB hub out just because I didn't end up using it um, that much. And I prefer it for another project in the future. Um, but again, it closes up fine. It works fine. I've, uh, I've had to fix it, which you're going to have to do with any of your projects. Uh, no pro no none of your first projects will be perfect you I opened up my Wii sleeper and showed it 
Um, you can see it's not perfect either, but I kind of just wanted to show this because I see people online still doing the, I can't create it, I need someone else to create it, and you're kind of just throwing money at a problem that doesn't exist. Um, sure, you could pay someone 400 bucks to design you a PCB or something like that. I don't know how much they charge, um, but you could also just do it yourself and pay 25 bucks, and then if you make an error, you pay another 25 bucks after fixing that. Um, and you can't really go wrong with a wired board. There's not much you can mess up, um, like other than just connecting power to ground, which is really difficult to do, let me tell you. <laughs> um, and even then, if you plug it into a PC, it usually it has overcurrent protection, so you're not gonna burn anything. But again, this is just uh, to show that I think anyone can really start off and just start in electronics. Um, this was a keyboard that I made. Um, I think anyone could really do this, if I'm honest. You've just got to put in the time and the effort to learn it, which there's lots of community support online. You've got uh, ZMK, KMK, QMK. There's plenty of keyboard uh, subreddits and stuff to help you out. Uh, you just got to find the right community to ask questions, Google lots of stuff. Um, you can pretty much just learn PCB design yourself and then work your way up. Um, I still believe that keyboards are a great introduction to electronics. Um, I see way too many people um, say, oh, you should use this keycad tutorial. And it's like, it's a blinking LED, whatever. And I think that's just a lame way to introduce yourself. That's, that's like saying you can't play competitive soccer um, before you do a thousand hours of training. Like, sure, but if you just want to learn soccer, the best way would be to actually get out on the field and learn soccer. Maybe you're not in the big leagues yet. No one says you have to be in the big leagues, but you're not like starting out just doing training, kicking at a goalpost for 500 hours. That's not going to be entertaining. You're going to hate soccer before you even started playing it. The same goes with this. If you're going to start by making an LED blink in Arduino, or you're going to make a, uh, a PCB with just a single LED and a resistor, you're going to start hating it before you actually start doing it. Um, it's a lot more fun to get a project that's relatively simple. Uh, keyboards really, you have the MCUs like with the RP2040, it's really cheap now. Um, I have a little cheap AliExpress one that I got for future projects. But you can just pick up one of these. These are kind of the new Pro, Pro Micro. And then all you need is a diode and a switch. And the switches, you can really use any, um, any buttons you want. Um, obviously they won't fit in the keyboards, but if you want to do like a little macro pad, you can use any button you want. And then you just need diodes. Um, if you're doing a macro pad, you don't even need diodes, but it's pretty simple to actually build one of these. And I think it's kind of dumb to see people online uh, think they can't or think they need to pay someone or I've seen like again the example of uh, suggesting doing an LED PCB first I don't I don't think that's a great start because you're gonna be bored of it before you even start um, but basically that's my mini rant today um, it was kind of a mix of showing off this keyboard uh, showing you that you're not gonna have a perfect first project and that anyone can really design and build a keyboard um, but if you like this, uh, if you think it was cool, share it around, uh, tell people that they can build their own. Um, but if you have any question, more questions about it, I'd be willing to show that. And uh, yeah, if you liked it, like, comment, subscribe, do all the YouTube stuff, I don't know. Um, I'm just kind of wanting to inspire people to build more stuff. Because I know the reason I got into electronics was being inspired by YouTube. Um, I just kind of want to be I don't know. I want I want other people to see my perspective and see that they're they don't have to do 500 hours of training before they can start. Um, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next video whenever that is.